So, uh, today we see with power prices uh, that uh, Alinta Energy is out there saying what no lefty has been willing to say, which is that there is a cost of transition rather than there's such a benefit to transition that everything's cheaper. Well, we knew that at the start. But also, opinion polling today about uh, whether nuclear power would be considered to be cheaper. This comes via the Financial Review, uh, uh, financial review and they say that, uh, what, the best part of uh, 34% of people believe that it uh, will actually end up being cheaper than renewables. Just 17% uh, of people uh, disagree. The vast majority are like the rest of us going, I don't know. Uh, but it's interesting here because the politics, and we could talk about the politics of nuclear reactors, which is no one wants one in their, their backyard, but Peter Dutton is slowly but surely getting to a place of trying to tell us where they may be. I hope they also turn around and say that if, if, if the local government area bids for it, you can have free power for 20 years, but we'll see what happens. But what did you take most interest out of today? That poll uh, or what was said by Alinta today? Well, what Alinta said today was the final denouement. Truth is being told. And I have said all along, right from when I was still in the parliament arguing against these policies, um, that the cost of electricity is what it costs to get it from the generator or the point of generation, to your house or your business. Mm. That's the cost. And for this perpetual lie to say that it's the cheapest form of electricity is just that, a lie. So I, I'm, by looking at both those pieces of evidence, both the poll and what Alint has had to say, um, all the things that many of us here on Sky and elsewhere have predicted are, are all absolutely true. Mm. So... The real question that should be put to people in a poll is, do you want cheap, reliable electricity that comes from coal until we get nuclear, or do you want expensive, unreliable electricity that comes from destroying forests, seabeds and productive yeah. land? Um, which would you prefer? Well, this is yeah, that's, that's the real distinction. But also something that we have seen in polling. We saw it before the last election. You certainly remember from the inside of the Labor Party, Stephen, the polling, which has consistently told us for a generation, when faced between saving the planet or how much you're willing to pay for it, there's a moment where Australians balk at the cost. Now, at the last election, again, 275, lipstick on the pig. Let's sort of pretend that there's nothing but savings. Reality, two years into that project, you've got uh, the companies coming out and saying, this is going to cost a lot of money. You've got the CSIRO saying it's going to cost a trillion dollars. Yet, why do we not see a greater friction between the people who said price would be a problem when price is a problem that they're not pushing back on what the government is doing? Well, I think the, you know, the coalition has been trying to make that case for... 14 or 15 years, and uh, sometimes they've won elections and other times they've lost elections. Mm. Uh, now they've got the fantasy policy called nuclear. Uh, and, I mean, I just wish no Bronwyn had had the courage to vote against the... I just wish you'd had the courage to vote against the proposition that we ban nuclear in this country, Bronwyn, because you voted for it. Uh, so, like, it's on the parlamentary hand side. Stephen, you voted for the ban. That is absolutely true. Ban. It, it, went in, it went into legislation it, that John Howard <laughs> put there, and it it's did. to my shame that yep, I have John to admit John Howard it. and you. You <laughs> got it wrong. So let's just... What did you get wrong when in your vote so in Parliament? Let's, now let's get... <laughs> Oh, I got, I got a million. Yeah, I, got I was going to say, I've got the Don't rest worry. of the show if you uh, want it. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, key, the key in the debate right now is nuclear has missed the window. No, it hasn't. If people have had courage, if Tony Abbott, if Peter Dutton had had the courage to want to argue this for, you know, through the Rudd... Gillard government, or even when they were in government for the nine years, they just had the courage to make this case, you might be able to get it to stack up. I mean, Peter Dutton keeps getting caught, keeps backing technologies no. that keep getting literally economically cancelled. Even his latest one, even his latest one just got dumped by the country that was advocating it in the UK. He is now advocating a policy that the country which was subsidising it, the UK, has just dumped. No, it couldn't Stephen, even win a bid the, in its own see, country. The, the point That's is just this. a fact. The point is this, that a lot of us have, have argued in favour of nuclear power. A lot of us have. But the fact of this is that 
Every time we stood our ground and said this pursuit of renewables would bankrupt the country, we won. It was Morrison that said, no, no, we'll go to net zero and went off to Glasgow. If he'd not done that and had the election beforehand, he would have won. But the bottom line is this. Now that people see that the ridiculous policies pursued by Albanese and Bowen and the mess it's landing this country in, and now you're starting to see the people who are actually... Uh, responsible for getting that electricity generated and to business houses and uh, people. Now that we see the mess, people are prepared to listen to what is a very difficult and complicated argument. And it's been kept di difficult and complicated for years because people don't want to get into that sludge and down in the weeds. But now we've got to the point where people are seeing what the reality is. And that's why the, the whole debate has now got traction. I want to talk it's about... Not, the... It's not a lack of courage. It's been a lack of ability to cut through, which is now happening.